and welcome to Cards by Kendra and the Team Tiny Autumn Hop. This video hop features creators from the Team Tiny Facebook group and it is hashtag driven which means that if you click on the hashtag in the description you'll be able to find all of the videos that were made by the many talented creators that are participating in the hop today. So when you're finished watching this video go check them out. Please consider leaving a comment at each stop and consider subscribing. Since you're here at my channel go ahead and click that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. For this autumn themed top, I will be sharing how I made these two cards featuring fall leaves with floating frames and embossed backgrounds. I have three different types of cardstock here that I've labeled on the left side because I wanted to test out some ink blending to determine which one works best. I have Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, International Paper Accent Opaque White Super Smooth Premium 80 pound cardstock, and Simon Hurley Creates Stark White cardstock. I'm using Simon Hurley Creates dye ink pads in fall colors. Due to time, I decided not to show the recordings of the process of ink blending on each of the different types of cardstocks, but I will show you the results here in just a minute. I didn't apply the colors in any particular pattern. I just wanted to have just a little bit of each color all over so that I could cut out my die cuts and be able to see all the different beautiful fall colors. All of the products that I'm using in today's video are listed in the description box below along with some links if you're interested in purchasing them. Some are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I make a small commission at no extra cost to you. This helps to support my website and YouTube channel. The Nina cardstock and International Paper were both very similar in how the ink blended on the paper. I honestly couldn't tell a difference between those two. However, the Stark White cardstock was a little different. It's a little heavier at 110 pounds and the ink went on much more smoothly and the color was a lot more vibrant without having to keep applying more color. I used the larger leaf dies from the seasonal layers thinlets set by Stampin' Up and as you can see I've already cut one out of the top of the Simon Hurley cardstock. The reason I decided to use the heavier weight cardstock is because I planned on putting clear embossing powder on the leaf in the future and I wanted to make sure it was sturdy enough. I went ahead and cut out five veins of the leaves from the ink blended paper and then I cut out the whole leaf part from the dark red cardstock. I added some brown ink to the red leaves because I wanted to bring in more of the same shade of brown that's in the wood grain paper that I'll be using to stamp my sentiment onto here shortly. Off camera I did this to all of the leaves and now I'm taking one of my other ink blended papers and the inside and out stitched rectangle stacks dynamics from MFT stamps and I'm running them through my big shot to cut out the frames. For the first card I'm using the largest die cut and skipping the next size down so that there will be a space between the two frames where my embossed foil will show through. For the second card the frames will be slightly smaller but it's the same process. For the leaves I decided to test out the different types of liquid glue that I have on hand to see which one works best for gluing together die cuts that have intricate pieces. First, I'm using Tombow's Mono Liquid Glue and I'm using the flat applicator to dab the glue onto the back of one of the leaves. I've used this glue in the past and it's super strong but sticky. It will get all over your fingers doing it this way, so I don't recommend using this glue unless you use a sponge to apply it like I'll be showing you here in a moment. Next, I'm using the Nouveau Glue Pen. Glue pen. Um, this is, uh, I haven't had this one very long, so I wasn't sure how sticky it was going to be or if it was even going to dry clear. But on the third leaf, I'm applying the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive directly to the back of the colored leaf piece, and this made a complete mess. I think I squeezed out too much glue. So finally, I just decided to take out my sponge and apply the glue directly to the sponge so I could control where the glue goes on the back of the leaf and how much. I learned this trick several years ago, but I had never tried it using the De Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, just the Tombow Mono Glue. The Nouveau Glue isn't as sticky as the Tombow Glue, but it does the job just fine. All it is is a Stampin' Up! sponge that I cut into four pieces so that it would fit into an old embellishment container so that I could keep it airtight. Another option that would have been even better for gluing these down would be to apply adhesive paper to the back of the cardstock before running it through the Big Shot machine. Then all you'd have to do is peel away the backing. I have some, but I always seem to forget to use it before I use my dies. So now I have my five leaves glued down and I'm gonna set them aside to dry. Now I'm taking a scrap piece of some wood grain paper and I'm cutting it down to fit inside the smaller rectangle frame. 
This is where I'll stamp my cinnamon. I'm using a sheet of Stampin' Up's pumpkin pie cardstock for my first layer on the card and cutting it down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. I also trimmed down a piece of rose gold foil cardstock down to the same size so that I could place them inside of the embossing folder separately and run them through the Big Shot. So I'm using two different embossing folders for these cards. The first one here is the Hammered Metal 3D Embossing Folder, and the other one here with the flowers and leaves is Textured Impressions. Both are by Stampin' Up. You really could use any embossing folder that you'd like here, and I'm sure it would turn out beautifully. I just love how the embossing stands out on this foil cardstock, don't you? Now, I'm trimming the foil sheets down to fit just inside the larger of the two frames that I cut out earlier for each card. For my sentiment, I'm using the Hello Autumn stamp from the Cheer All Year stamp set by Stampin' Up. After stamping and testing out different colors of embossing powder on the wood grain background, I thought they were both too difficult to read. So I decided just to go with black ink, but I wanted the embossed look. So I'm using Ranger Archival ink in jet black. It stays wet long enough to apply clear embossing powder to it to give it that raised look. But apparently I didn't hit record on my camera when I did this step, so I apologize. Now that the leaves are mostly dry, I'm taking the Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Dabber and applying embossing ink to the entire leaf. I did want to mention that two of the leaves were still sticky even after letting them sit for several hours. The one I glued down with the Tombow liquid glue was still wet and you could see where the glue seeped out and then the Nuvo glue pen one was a little, a little wet still but it didn't seep out as much because it wasn't as sticky. It could be that I just applied too much glue but it really doesn't matter because I'm making it sticky again by applying this embossing ink. I then added clear embossing powder and I heat set it using my heat tool after letting the heat gun heat up for about 30 seconds. And if you look closely here, you can see some smoke and I don't know if that's because I had some powder on my glass mat or if I got too close or what, but luckily I didn't start any fires. For my card bases, I'm using thick, very vanilla cardstock that I've cut in half and I'm scoring it at four and a quarter down the middle and even though I didn't put my scoreboard in the middle of the camera view so you can see what I'm doing, I'm placing the edges of the cardstock against the edge of the scoreboard so that the edges line up exactly before I press down on the score line with my bone folder. I always had trouble lining up the edges just right, and this tip that I learned from one of the other Team Tiny members has helped me so much to get evenly aligned card bases every time. So you can learn a lot from these other crafty ladies, so please check out the other videos along the hop. Oh, and I guess I didn't trim the first layer pieces down until later in the process. Oops. Um, but now I'm using Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue down the pieces. It gives me just enough time to center the pieces exactly where I want them, but it dries fast and it dries clear, so in case any of the glue seeps out on the edges, you won't be able to see it. Now I'm adding thin 3D foam strips to the back of my larger frame to give it that floating frame look. These strips are made by Darice and I bought them online from Michaels. I think they were an online only item and I had to buy them in bulk, but it was so worth it because I use them all the time. I'm using my Tim Holtz mini snips to cut, cut down the pieces and I always save every little piece so that I can use it later for cards. And then I'm placing this frame on top of the foil piece. And now I'll be using the 3D foam squares to put the sentiment down in the middle. To attach the leaves, I'm using some smaller 3D foam squares for the part of the leaf that's gonna to be touching the first layer, and then some deluxe adhesive on the part of the leaf that's gonna to be touching the frame. For the finishing touches, I'm adding three black rhinestones to each of the cards. 
And that finishes up my cards for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and that you like this design. I'd really like to try this design on some other cards, like maybe some Halloween cards or Christmas cards. I really like the floating frame idea. So let me know what you think. Please leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, you can also follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook at Cards by Kendra. And you can also visit my website at www.cardsbykendra.com. Don't forget to click on that hashtag in the description box, Team Tiny Autumn Hop, so you can check out the other videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.